What is a disappointment? Well, Google characterizes it to be sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. However, I think that it can be very nuanced and come in a variety of different ways. Some could be situational, like eating ice cream just for it to fall on the floor or buying a cookbook and literally only using it once and never again. I mean, seriously, who buys cookbooks? You can just find them recipes online for free and not have to pay like $20 to flip through a book. I don't even know how to read. Others could just be emotional, like finding out that a loved one has died or that you just got broken up with. And lastly, others could just be special disappointments like you. I mean, just look at yourself. But in all of the examples, there holds a special spot. Ones for true disappointments. The ones where you had all of your hopes up to the very highest just for all of it to come crashing down. And yes, as you read from the title, Overwatch 2 claims one of these very unique spots. So in case if you've been living under a rock, all of this really started on May 16th, 2023, when the executive producer Jared Noose and game director Aaron Keller announced that they haven't made the amount of progress on the PvE mode than they have hoped, and that there was no end date on which they could actually completely finish what they promised us back in 2019 during during the gameplay trailer and during BlizzCon. So things that were like skill trees and long-term progression via PVE gameplay wouldn't be there. And so we're left with another difficult choice. Do we continue to pour all that effort into to PVE, um, uh, hoping that we can land it at some point in the future? Um, or do we stick with this set of values that we've aligned on and, and focus on the live game and focus on serving all of you? With everything we've learned about what it takes to operate this game at the level that you deserve, it's clear that we, we can't deliver on that original vision for PvE that was shown in 2019. What that means is that we won't be delivering that dedicated hero mode with talent trees, um, that long-term power progression. Uh, those things just aren't in our plans anymore. Also, just to clarify, this doesn't mean that PvE is gone entirely. It means that PvE will still be released. However, all of the things that basically differentiated it will be gone. The selling factors won't be there anymore. So essentially, the first game and the second game have a very little change or difference without the PvE. So all there is is like new graphics, a 5v5 format, and new skins and heroes. But other than that, there really isn't anything that can justify the creation of a sequel to the first game without the PvE. And I'm a perfect analogy for this. It's like that one friend you had in school where they forgot that there's an assignment due the next day so they ask you to send it to them and they just add a few extra things to it so they don't get caught using what is essentially the exact same piece of work in this case overwatch 2 is the same game other than a few added hints of originality and new content compared to the first and what i love the most is in the developer update video they frame it as they are trying to do more for us and that by like stopping their work on the pve they can put more into the pvp aspect of the game but from day one on release this game was already in shambles shitty battle pass with little to no good content a shop for buying ridiculously expensive skins little to no good up updates or events, weird balancing and slow changes to heroes, and personally the worst for me was the removal of creating and finding groups, because get this, in a team game that requires communication and teamwork, you take away the one way that you can communicate with strangers and actually find people who have mics and are willing to talk, and I don't know about you guys, but for me, who's trash and ass and this hard stuck gold slash bronze slash silver, I need someone to talk to and I need someone to communicate with. And that's extremely frustrating. I can't call I think all of these problems that I just listed about the game in its current state stems from corporate greed for money. And I think it's especially prevalent now after the announcement on the Overwatch blog that the new invasion season, which is season five, will bring new story missions that can only be played if you pay $15 for them, which is absolutely insane. If you are somehow clinically insane enough to pay $15 for the bundle, you will get access to the Overwatch 2 invasion story missions during the season and permanently after, which I doubt people will play it more than like three times because the replayability on this will be awful. A uh, thousand Overwatch coins, brand new Sojourn legendary skin, including permanent access to her as a playable hero for new players, which is unlocked upon completing store mission challenges. That is also horrible. Why, if I'm already paying money, I also have to redo the campaign and do challenges in order to get permanent access to Sojourn? Like the hero should be free. They, they were originally free. Why are you making me buy it and then doing challenges for her afterwards? It's 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 blasphemous but get this because it's blizzard they also give you another option so if you are even more insane i guess you're like a psychopath or some shit you can pay more money for this dog shit game if you pay 40 dollars, you can get all of that as well as the null sector premium battle pass with 20 battle pass skips which is so useless an additional 1000 overwatch coins for a total of 2000 overwatch coins and two additional legendary skins for cassidy and kiriko like, what the fuck? What I find the funniest is how they tell you the value of each thing you're getting, even though it's probably just like some random poor intern who had to just input randomized values to make it seem like it's a steal. The desperate money grab that this is, is just so blatant and shouldn't be acceptable. That's right, folks. Longtime owner, Mr. Krabs, is opening a new restaurant called The Krusty Krab 2. First of all, congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Hello, I like money. 
What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money! Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the PvE should be free. In fact, Overwatch 2 was originally designed to just be an add-on to the first game that could be purchased for the PvE and co-op aspect. Quote, back in 2019, then-director Jeff Kaplan stepped onto the BlizzCon stage and promised an extensive Overwatch 2 PvE experience with skill trees and customizable hero abilities offered as a viable add-on to the original game. It would have a shared multiplayer universe with the OG title. That way, players who didn't want to shell out extra for the PvE sequel wouldn't get left in the dust. Over time, it became clear that we weren't getting what was promised as Kaplan left Blizzard, Keller took over, and Overwatch 2 became a standalone sequel that would replace Overwatch 1 entirely, end quote. The problem is, when you remove things like skill trees and long-term progression from your PvE, it just becomes the same thing that we've seen before, like from the first game with Uprising, Blackwatch, and Storm Rising. Sure, in the article and gameplay trailers, they promise massive maps, in-depth storylines, new challenging enemies, as well as overall more lore and cinematics. It isn't a massive change or improvement from what we've seen before, and certainly does not justify a paywall behind it. While I do understand that Overwatch 2 is free to play and they need to find a way to generate revenue, this is not the way to do it. Don't make a PvE mode that essentially has the same base mechanics as the first game without elevating it in any sort of way. Again, the entire justification of Overwatch 2 was the PvE and bringing in a fresh new perspective and take on it compared to the first. If I really wanted to play these PvE games, I could just play archives for free and not have to pay the money. So there really is no difference unless you add something brand new like skill trees and long-term progression, but that's gone now. So Oh well, but I think that everything that I've talked about so far really just shows the corporate greed of Activision Blizzard and how much they just really only care about money. For example, if you compare this game with the first one, the first one really just felt organic. It felt like it was the baby of the developers. They just really cared and put their heart and soul into raising it and growing it and making it a beautiful game. But for Overwatch 2, it just feels like the baby just got burved and then was dumped in the back alley next to the hospital. It just feels so corporately done and it just feels like a machine now where its only purpose is to just get as much money as possible from its player base and just try and milk the most out of you like they're your dairy farmers. What does that even mean? <laughs> now, just to really hit my point home about Activision Blizzard being a money hungry machine, I'll be doing a lightning round style recap of all the shitty things that this game has done. Ready? Three, two, one. Go. A change in the monetization of the game, which basically turns the game into a money machine. You have to pay to unlock new heroes, which makes it pay to win. It's a very scummy way to get players to get new heroes, especially because if those heroes become meta. For example, Kiriko and Sojourn. There's a difference between overall credits and coins, and coins are ridiculously expensive. Battle Pass doesn't even give you enough to buy the next one, and the stuff in the Battle Pass is mostly filler. No good updates. For example, shitty events, Olympus, Symmetries. What the fuck is Symmetries? Star Watch, Lover Watch. Well, yes, they do bring new content to the game, but the events are lackluster, and the skins, which used to be the biggest hype for players in the first game, are now not accessible unless you pay money. I don't know about you, but I ain't trying to drop twenty dollars on a legendary skin when I broke as hell. Copy meta changes and balancing. For example, Cog being useless, Doom being switched to tank. Why do you get switched to tank? He was good as DPS. Honor Mercy constantly being nerfed for no reason. Why do they keep nerfing the healers? I love my healers. Sojourn being meta for the longest time. Ryan being asked for the first few seasons at the start. Genji being asked, even though he's considerably one of the harder heroes to learn and has the highest kill ceiling out of all the heroes. Mostly, considerably. Don't argue with me in the comments. I'm scared. Bringing back things from the first game and using it as new content. For example, bringing back the on fire meter and using old Overwatch 1 skins as rewards for new events, like the win victory skin for Mercy for the Olympus event. Slow changes on heroes and balancing. For example, Sojourn and Kiriko. Meta's being too long and broken for the longest time. Weird changes with competitive and the fact that they made it harder to climb with the way the progression system works. Hawk being reworked in season seven when we are currently in season five. He is literally dog shit right now. Why don't they change him any faster? And finally, the worst and shittiest thing they've done, in my opinion, is that they lied to us and continued promising us about PVE, even though they knew well before that they stopped working on it and that it was a lost cause. This is a direct quote by Aaron Keller, by the way. Quote, lastly, people have wondered why this announcement came at this time. After Overwatch 2 had launched, we started refining our plans for future seasons. The team realized they couldn't keep pulling focus towards the promised PVE mode as plans grew, so they decided to abandon hero missions altogether. The decision was the start of a long process, not the final piece of it, Keller writes. Instead of hero missions, the team is is now focusing its efforts on the live service game, which is ostensibly Overwatch's bread and butter, end quote. But the game is still dog shit. Now, while it might just sound like I'm shitting on the developers of the video, I'm not. The entire point of this video is to educate y'all about what's currently going on with Overwatch 2, as well as sprinkling my disappointment with this game along the way. Okay, let's be real, it's not a sprinkle, it's like the average Asian dad amount of disappointment, which if you don't know, is a lot. But still, the main thing I want people to understand when watching this video is that you shouldn't blame the developers for being overwhelmed, but instead, the corporations who are running them. Remember guys, Corporate greed for money. If I could clap, I would clap, but like, you can't hear that, right? It's, yeah, my mic is too, uh, it's too good. You know, can't capture the clapping sounds. Hey, yo, what? Anyways, like that infamous saying, don't hate the player, hate the game. Is that, is that even the right way to use it? Whatever. You know what? The main takeaway is don't shoot the messenger, shoot the big corporate machine running them and telling them what to do. Before I already touched on this topic a little bit in my previous video regarding Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, go watch it if you haven't already, where I talked about how there had been claims and reports of Activision Blizzard CEO, Bobby Kotick, 
overexerting developers by putting on a strenuous amount of work on them and requiring them to work overtime. Now, while these claims were published a year ago, I wouldn't be surprised if this type of behavior is still going on. And in fact, I do know that this behavior is still going on due to how Activision Blizzard is treating their dev team behind the scenes. Firstly, there are 300 developers in Team 4, the developer team behind Overwatch, and it apparently takes a year for Team 4 to develop each new map and hero. However, it is safe to assume that it probably takes them longer due to the working conditions they are in. This leads me to my next point of how when Jeff Kaplan was still the head of Overwatch, he quote unquote shielded his team from corporate BS. And in the report, it states, quote, Kaplan would resist corporate culture and business pressures to change things that he felt would compromise Overwatch or the team behind it. Kennedy attributes the positivity of the Overwatch team to Kaplan's ability to shield the team from Activision Blizzard. And since his departure, several Overwatch team members have also departed, end quote. Now that Keller is game director, this resistance against Activision Blizzard might have disappeared and allowed for less freedom and more pressure on Team 4, especially due to the company policies that were enacted on the employees at Blizzard. One of Blizzard's policies that were seen as controversial was requiring non-exempt workers to return to their offices to work for at least three days a week. This policy had many of the company's employees speaking out against it due to the fact that over the last year, games like Overwatch 2, World of Warcraft, and Diablo 4 were for the most part developed remotely. The World of Warcraft team especially seems to have been impacted pretty hard due to low levels of developers with the team having to create crisis maps, which details what they can and can't do because of the departures. And for me, I think it's safe to assume that this has also affected the development of Overwatch as many employees on the team left pretty recently due to these policies and pressures set by Blizzard. This all goes to show what developers have to endure when it comes to creating Overwatch and working on it. Because of this, I severely doubt that anytime soon we'll be seeing any good changes happen to the game. While they do say that they can now fully focus on the PvP aspect and they are still bringing in a PvE mode, it still doesn't excuse the fact that we were robbed of a fully fledged PvE and now just have to settle for the PvE off wish that we still have to pay for. While many people believe that the PvE in Season 6 will still be good and introduce a fresh new start for the lore and the game in general with an overhaul of content like story missions, hero masteries, a new game mode, and support hero, it is still important to recognize that we were promised something that was hyped up to us for literal years and in the end it was all a lie and a massive cash grab. Corporations like Activision Blizzard think that it's okay to lie to their player bases just to milk a couple extra bucks and it's vital that we don't feed into the system and become susceptible to it. If I have to be completely honest, the whole boycott Overwatch thing that's been popping up on the internet in the past few months, I am completely on board with because at this point I really couldn't care anymore. The game is already dead to me and in my opinion we never should have gotten a sequel in the first place. PvE aside, it was completely unnecessary. Personally, the PvE was cool and the only justification for the second, but now that there really isn't anything that is unique about it and everything is monetized as well as the company showing that they don't give a shit about us as the players or their employees, who cares about them? If this is the only way to make them change their habits and greed, I have no complaints. If Overwatch 2 somehow does become good in the future and most of these issues are solved, I would love to be proved wrong. If Activision Blizzard can somehow become less greedy, stop caring about money and start caring more about their employees, I would love to be proved wrong. But for now, my points still stand and Overwatch 2 will go down forever in history as one of the most disappointing promises in the gaming world. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.